What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video we're going to talk about an extension that allows you to quickly create skins as well as like inflated structures and other things like that inside of SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can download Soap Skin and Bubble by going to the SketchUp Extension Warehouse. And you can download this for free um, and install it inside of SketchUp. So um, you can actually install it directly from the SketchUp Extension Warehouse button right here. So just go in there and search for Soap Skin and Bubble in order to do that. Um, but basically the way that it works is it gives you this little tool set right here. But basically what this does is it gives us this little tool set right here that you can use in order to create skins inside of SketchUp. And so let's say for example that we were to take this shape, and I know that we could just draw a line across this shape, but we'll go ahead and use this for right now. If I was to come in here and click on the button for generate soap skin, notice what that's going to do is that's going to use the exterior of this circle in order to generate a skin inside of SketchUp. Now notice when we first do that, this gives you an option to divide this up of um, putting in a value of 1 to 30. So if I was to put in 1, notice how it's going to take this shape and it's going to subdivide it like one time. Um, if you type in a value of 30, notice how it's going to divide it a lot of times. So if you divide it a lot of times, then you're going to get a lot more detail, but it is going to be a little bit more um, geometry and also processor intensive, especially when it first starts creating this. But once you're done, you can hit the inner key and that's going to generate this as a surface. And so at the moment, right, like this isn't especially interesting, though it is helpful to be able to create a grid inside of an object. And I have actually used this tool to do that. However, there's two other functions in here that you can use in order to add a little bit more information to the skin that's created. So we're going to jump over to the Generate Soap Bubble button. And what you need to do is you need to select a surface created by Soap Skin and Bubble. And then you can click on this option right here to generate that bubble. So then what it's going to do is it's going to ask you to input pressure. So in this case, I'm going to input a pressure of 50 and hit the Enter key. And so notice how what that does is that basically simulates pressure being applied to this object. So this becomes almost like a bubble. So if I was to put in a different value, like let's say negative 25, this is going to basically generate pressure taking this in the other direction. So now this is going to move upward like this. So you can use this in order to generate surfaces like this that seem to have like an internal pressure to them. So now there's another option in here called the soap skin ratio. So if we click on this button right here to edit the soap skin ratio, notice how this tells us to input the stress ratio of an object. And so right now, this, this is basically how tight or tense this surface is. So let's say I was to type in a value of 0.5 and hit the enter key. Notice what's going to happen is this is going to use the pressure that you had inputted and recalculate this. So the lighter the ratio in here, the more this object is going to be able to inflate. So if I put in a value of like 0.25 or something like that, it's going to let it inflate a little bit more, but you're probably about as limited or th this is probably about as much as you're going to get with this particular surface. So if we were to turn this up, so if we were to put this to like two, notice how it's basically going to like tighten up and this object isn't going to move outward as much. Now you do need to be really careful because if you put like a really small value, so if I put like a 0 0.01 in here, the lowest value it can get, Notice how you can get this kind of like crazy result where this kind of blows up. If you ever get the, um, if you ever get a situation where this blows up, you can click on the stop button right here. And then you can also do an edit undo. Though I do recommend saving before you mess around too much with your ratio, just to make sure that everything's going to keep working. So in addition, you can also, because the circle's kind of not that interesting of an example, right? But you can also, you can really do this with any closed shape. So um, notice how, first off, one thing that's kind of interesting about this tool is sometimes you get kind of like stuck in the tool itself. Um, notice how my mouse cursor right now is white instead of black. That generally means that this tool is still running. So a lot of the time to get out of that, what you can do is you can come up here and you can click on this button right here to select in order to get back to your regular SketchUp tools. But notice how we can use this in order to create a skin along this surface as well. So if I type in a value of 30 and hit the enter key, notice that's going to come in here and that's going to generate the surface right here. But then you could use the bubble function in order to add a bubble to this. And I'm going to go ahead and type in a value of negative 25 again. Or maybe we'll do a negative 100 actually. So I'm going to type in a negative 100 
and notice how I'm getting a little bit more of the surface in here. So you can use this in order to create these surfaces and you can also come back in here later if you want to and you can select these, use the bubble function and you can adjust this. So these aren't fixed, you can use this to adjust um, how much of a bulge you're getting in these surfaces right here. But again, not ultra interesting just because this curve is flat right so I mean being able to create the pressure bubble piece of it is kind of interesting however where this gets really interesting is when you start using surfaces like this and taking them into 3d so let's say for example that we were to take this object right and use sandbox tools in order to move this up and move this down right so now you've got this object that's really in 3d um, right here. So it's not just flat, it's actually a three dimensional shape. Well, now if you were to take this shape and use soap, skin, and bubble, notice how you can use this in order to generate a skin inside of this object as well. So you can use this in order to create 3D surfaces and holes in SketchUp. And we'll talk about a better or a more important way of being able to do that in a second. And so this works for any number of different kinds of shapes. So let's say for example that I had this shape that's basically half a cylinder, but what I've done is I've come in here and I've enclosed this. So I've just drawn lines across these edges right here. Well, once I do that, I can select this whole thing and I can generate a bubble in here using that tool. So we can start by using it to create a skin, and then you could come in here and notice how right now it's applying pressure inward, but you could adjust that pressure in order to get different results, right? So if I type in a value of 25, notice how that's going to adjust the pressure that's in here, and the surface is going to adjust as well. And again, like the more geometry that's in here, the longer this simulation is going to take, but you can use this in order to get a lot of different results. So if I typed in a value of like 100, then that's going to push this out even further. And so that'll work for other shapes too. Like for this one, I just took a couple arcs, right? And I just kind of like bent them outwards a little bit. So all I did is I drew some vertical arcs and then a couple more and used the rotate tool. And then I closed this in, but again, we can use this in order to select this object, generate a skin within the object itself. So a lot of the time I don't even play around with the pressure, I just use this to generate a skin like this. Now do be aware on some complex shapes and other things like that, you can get some areas where you don't necessarily get all of the holes filled in. You might have to fill those in manually just by drawing edges across here. So just be aware that it's not always perfect when you do this. But even for something like this, so if we take this surface, generate a soap skin like this, and we'll go ahead and leave this one on 10, you can use this in order to create a surface like this, but let's say that you were trying to create like a piece of furniture or something like that. Well, if you use this in order to create this skin, and then I'm just gonna come in here, I'm gonna use selection toys to select only the edges and not the soft edges. So like this, but then you could use an extension like lines to tubes or something like that. And we'll say this is gonna be a half inch, but you could use this in order to generate tubes along the surface using the geometry that was created, just like this. So you can use this in order to generate like meshes and nets and other things like that by combining those two extensions. And so there's two applications where I see this used a lot. So one of the applications is for like tensile style structures. So let's say that I was to draw the edges of a structure like this and then select all four of them. Well, this is an excellent tool for coming in here and generating a skin across those. So let's say I set my division to 20 and hit the enter key. Notice how I can use that in order to quickly generate a tensile structure across this surface. And again, you can use the pressure functions in order to adjust the way that this structure works in here. You could also adjust that soap skin ratio. So if we adjusted this to like 0.5, Notice how you're gonna get a different result in here by doing this. So this is a great tool for tensile structures. And then the other area where I use this tool a ton, probably the most actually, is for fixing terrains. So let's say we had a gap in a terrain 
like this. Well, what you could use, what you could do is you could select the perimeter and then use this tool to patch this. And one other extension I use to make this a lot easier is called Sketch UV. You can download Sketch UV from the Sketch Occasion extension warehouse, but it has a path select tool in here that I can use. And I think I need to go inside this group, but it has a path select tool that I can use in order to quickly select a path inside of SketchUp. So I use this in order to generate my selection in here. It's a lot faster. So that's a free extension. But if I hit the enter key, notice how it leaves me with this uh, selection right here. Well, then I can use Soap, Skin, and Bubble in order to add a surface back in to this 3D surface like this. So it doesn't always 100% match up with the, uh, with the grid that you have in here, but it's a really great tool for patching those different site work openings inside of SketchUp. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you use Soap, Skin, and Bubble for. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you are interested in learning how to use SketchUp, make sure you check out the course at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. I will link to that on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.